Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So this is a little different from my usual schedule, but it's still relevant and quite an interesting project to look at. Now these components are temperature sensors. Specifically, these are the popular DS18B20s, which is a one wire device. Now what this means is that its data can be sent over just one wire, as opposed to something like serial data, which would normally need at least two wires for TX and RX. The other two connections are for powering the device, and we can run this from anything like 3V3 or up to 5 volts. The DS18B20 can come in all forms of packages, whether they are already housed or come as a standalone component, which looks extremely like a transistor. If you're wondering why I'm making a video about these, then that's because I have another video series in production where I'm building a 250 watt 2.4 gigahertz amplifier. And on the heatsink, I'll be attaching one of these sensors so that I can monitor the heatsink temperature with live data. It's quite a big project, so I'm documenting all of the different steps that I'm going to be needing to take. And this is one of them. The final project will see the DS18B20 temperature sensor connected to a Raspberry Pi, which then feeds data into Node-RED. But before I install these components, I wanted to test that they're working as required as one of these I got from China, and one of them was actually from the UK, which I pretty much trust. The easiest way to perform this test is to use an Arduino, as there are libraries already made to handle the data and temperature calculations. So here I am going to use an Arduino Nano, and the only other component we need is a 4K7 resistor, which will be used as a pull-up on the center data pin, or yellow wire if we're using the other sensor. Now the circuit looks like this, with the sensor's flat side facing you, the left pin is ground, the center pin is the data pin, and the third pin on the right is the power input. For this test, I'll connect the 3V3 DC output from the Arduino to the power rail on the breadboard. This will then connect to the pin on the right of the temperature sensor. The ground pin on the Arduino will also connect to the ground rail on the breadboard and then take a jumper from this to the pin on the left of the sensor. The center pin is also connected to the 3V3 rail, but through a 4K7 pull-up resistor. It's just a normal resistor, but it's acting as a pull-up for the data pin. We then need to take a jumper wire from between the center pin and the resistor over to a digital pin on the Arduino. For this, I'll be using pin D2. With the circuit complete, we can now plug the Arduino into the computer using a USB cable. We then need to load up an Arduino IDE, which is the application we use to write code, compile, and then send to the Arduino. But don't worry, this is actually easier than it sounds. First, we need to select the Arduino board from the drop-down list. Once selected, we can now start writing the code. To make things easier and to write less code, we can install a one-wire library that has already been made by other users. You can install this by using the library manager within the Arduino IDE software. Once installed, it's now time to start writing the code. Now, I won't go through all of the lines here. In fact, I'll be copying and pasting from another project to make things a little quicker. You can pause the video at each point if you want to look at each line of code more closely. I'll also leave a link down below of where I got this code from. At the top of the code is where we import the pre-made libraries, the one wire library, and then the Dallas temperature library. As we go down the code, copy and pasting in the lines of code, here we're declaring an instance of the one wire and then passing it to the Dallas temperature library so that it can calculate the received data. The rest of the code simply tells the Arduino to write the received and converted data to the serial console so that we can see the data output. As you can see here, the temperature is now being read and shown in the console, first in Celsius and then in Fahrenheit. Now, if I squeeze my finger over the sensor, you can see the temperature output increase the longer that I hold it and then go down when I release. Now, the other sensor, which I have and showed you at the start of the video, is also a one wire temperature sensor but it's encased in a threaded bolt to make installing the sensor into a heatsink more easy. Just by changing the wires from the little sensor to the house sensor is quite simple, and it still works perfectly, as you can see from the decoded temperature output. 
Of course, in the real world, we're not going to be looking at the serial console for data output from an Arduino. We would normally take this data and do something with it. For example, you could code the Arduino to turn a fan on and off when it reaches a certain temperature, or even kill the power to an amplifier if the temperature goes above a certain point. Of course, if you wanted to see the temperature on an LCD, you can do that as well. With a few lines of code and an LCD hooked up to the I2C port of the Arduino, you can send the received temperature data to the display. Now, I guess a four line LCD is a bit overkill for just showing the temperature, but of course, you could show other information as well, or just use an LCD with less lines. The end goal here is to use this sensor on Node Red. And as you can see here, it's showing live data. Adding this into the Node Red dashboard is fairly easy, just using a pre written node. Well, there we go, guys. Something a little different from the normal schedule, but it is still relevant considering that this is going to be part of a project that I'll be doing soon. Also, if you're building amplifiers or anything that generates heat and you want to keep an eye on it, then this is a perfect solution for that. Now, previously, I had used thermistors with Node Red, but I found using this one wire temperature sensor a lot more accurate. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that and I hope you learned something today. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.